Glenn, we are back. Uh, we're back with Glenn Metropolit uh, talking about your NHL career. And uh, actually, you've you've played all over the world, literally. So what were some of those other leagues like? Uh, what was the atmosphere? Well, my, my first uh, stand, I went to Finland, Scandinavia. And um, I, I, I fell in love with such a small country and being so good at hockey. Uh, the, the time I went over there was basically to get away from Washington Capitals. I had a newborn daughter, Olivia, at the time. And it was four years of being up and down, sent up, sent down. And, um, you know, there was a few times where we were staying in the residence and she'd sleep in a drawer, you know? So it was kind of oh, just wow. like one of those where I was like, trade me and they, they wouldn't trade me. So I'm like, I, I know I'm good enough for the NHL. So the only reason, the only way I could get away from Washington was to go over there for a season. And that was my intention to go over to a good league. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to Finland. It's respected. I went there, had a great year. Um, and then the lockout year came, I stayed another year and, uh, then I had some bites again. Um, then I, I, then I decided to go back for one more year to Switzerland and, uh, had a great year in Lugano. But, um, in regards to the skill level, Finland was a really good North American, uh, style of hockey. Like the Finns really, they really grinded it out. And then you go to Switzerland where it was more of a, more of a finesse game, less contact, um, um, but a really good skill. So, um, and then I came back to the NHL. Um, there's been a few stints where I went to Team Canada. Um, you know, you play against other countries. Um, yeah, I got to see the whole world. And I, I've been blessed, man. Hockey's taken me all around the world. Um, so, um, I, I can go on forever talking about all leagues and different kind of styles of hockey, but. So, you know, you were talking about all the, how it's, how it's essentially saved you. And, you know, this thing just popped up with Don Cherry with this whole thing where he said, you people, and, and I, I, I've, I've met, you know, Don before. He's, yeah, he's a little old school, but, but, you know, I think he really meant everyone. He's been out there telling people that he meant really, really meant by that was everyone. And then you got this Jess Allen that's on whatever their version of the view is up there trying to say that, you know, hockey players are basically just a bunch of bullies and thugs and stuff. But I mean, my kid plays and, you know, she tries to make it seem like it's a rich kid sport, but I mean, it's far from it. I mean, your story is evidence that it's, it's anything but yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I've been on so many teams over my career. I mean, there's nothing better than a hockey dressing room. I mean, we all get along the sports, you know, sport teaches us, or teaches us so much about life, right? Teamwork, discipline, sticking together, um, character, character, yeah, exactly. Persevere, whatever, right? You can take take anything, but it's uh, in regards to what she said, <laughs> take it with a grain of salt. I, I, Don Cherry, I mean, he this guy was a he 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 does everything for the veterans, and by him saying you you people, you know, he, he's like you kids, you you guys out there on the ice. It, it's just uh, by them kind of just taking it out of whack. Uh, he, they were waiting to do that, it seemed, right? They wanted to kind of get them out of there, and that, that was their opportunity. That's right. Yeah, it almost seems a little bit like that. Um, yeah. Now, um, you've talked about how, the fact that hockey has been your life. I mean, what was it like to make the decision to retire? Uh, I know it's it's kind of a common theme that many athletes feel a bit of culture shock coming out of the game because it's all you've known for so long, and that's what you were talking about, a, a little bit about that. Tell us a little bit about that adjustment. Tell us some of the things you're doing now. Well, I retired three years ago, Dave. Um, you know, my last year, I went over to Bowls. I, I got closure. It wasn't really the, the most professional league that, that I thought it was going to be. So I came back on Super Bowl Sunday. I left my equipment there. I said, I'm done. And, um, you know, I just had enough of hockey a little bit, you know. And then I came back to Destin area, Panama City area. And, um, you know, spent three years there just kind of doing some NHL alumni stuff where I'd fly out and do some um, – you know, some workshops and some charity games. And then finally I'm like, I, I really got to get back into hockey. So, um, I, I, I decided I'm moving down to Tampa Bay with the lightning and I'm doing some community work, um, player development, you know, just, um, just bringing the, you know, teaching kids how to play hockey and I'm coaching a few teams. Um, and I think I'm trying, I'm, I'm finding my groove again. So and you, you played down there, right? I, I was here in Tampa in 2002. Um, you also got, you said, mentioned about playing uh, in the national team for the world championships. How'd you first find out about that? Well, what happened there in 06, um, I was in Lugano, Switzerland. And um, I had a great, great year. I led the league in scoring. We won a championship. I was MVP. And they usually award like a, a Canadian player that's over in Europe to play in the world championships. And uh, I happened to be the guy that kind of got 
I, I never said no to Team Canada. I never will. Um, if I get that opportunity, and uh, they, they gave me a chance to go there and play in uh, Latvia, Riga, and um, you know we had Sid Crosby, Patrice Bergeron, um, Jeff Carter, Rich, um, just our team was stacked of young, high end skill, and um, we ended up going there. We ended up losing the, the bronze medal game, but it was it was amazing to see the you know a Sid Crosby being 18, 19 years old, just how good he was. Um, so yeah, it was a uh, quite an experience, you know, quite an experience. Um- and one thing that I kind of want to bring up, you know, everybody thinks, you know, hockey players are just, you know, big, massive dudes. But, I mean, you're usually one of the smaller guys on the ice, huh? Yeah, I'm 5'10", but uh, I'm probably, well, now that I'm 45, I'm probably 5'7". Now. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, I was 5'10 when I played. I wasn't really big, but, you know, like they say, you can't measure your heart, right? You can't weigh your heart. And I kind of, I took everything as a, as a, my own little war. That was my puck. I'm going to fight you for that puck. And if you do that, you're going to get noticed. And that's what teams wanted. And now, lastly, you were just inducted into the ECHL oh. Hall of Fame. Um, what does that accomplishment mean to you? It's, it's quite it's quite an accomplishment, right? My, my name's going to be on the Hall of Fame forever. So it's um, it's something special. Well, Glenn, no luck, man. Not thank, me. thank you so much for, for joining us today. I know you've, you've got some place you've got to get moving to. Um, yeah. But I really appreciate it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Glenn Metropolit. That's our show for tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. Mo Giles, take yeah. us home. <laughs>